This is Hemi Syed here. It is April the 13th, 2014. We're here in Bogota, Colombia. And we're about to go on the Ciclovia, which is the open streets here in uh, Bogota, just a few blocks over. We've rented the bikes. I have a nice red one. And we're waiting for a few more people for our group to head out. So enjoy the ride. And we're off to Ciclovia here in Bogota from the bike rental place called Leica or Leica Bikes. And here we go. So if you rode for a little bit, and now we're in the thick of it. It's a lot of fun. It's certainly very different than Medellin Ciclovia. They have different kinds of streets, they have a different topography. And here's our group. So it does stop and respect the traffic at the intersection. Thank you. 
the side streets oh, are. Is yeah, Bal from Bangalore. He's also with our group. And and you're just telling me they don't have uh, anything like this, Seclovia, in India. Nothing at this scale. Nothing as regular as this. Only rare events uh, in cities like Pune, which have uh, an elite bicycle. Uh, you know, class. You know, class? Bike, class of bikers. Yeah. Not a culture, but a class of bikers. Yeah, just a small group of elite people who have come to acknowledge the benefits of cycling. So it's Both very are, different here. It is very different here. What do you think of Seclovia? Will it work? Uh, will it work in India? Yes. Any I think thoughts? That's where we are headed. There are enough people now. The critical mass isn't there yet, but it will be so. Well, that's encouraging. So that's uh, my fellow group colleague here in Seclovia in Bogota. And we do stop at all the lights, unlike uh, Toronto where we uh, rather like to go through the lights on cycles. I'm going to take a little bit of a break from recording and just enjoy the ride. levels of income of the city and it's completely connected throughout yeah so we're going to only be going through this eastern corridor because 121 kilometers is a lot and then one of the things that they do this is 
it used to be originally uh, directed by the transit department, the transportation department, until 1995, which is when this Guillermo Peñalosa, who is the brother of the mayor, he was hired by Mocus to run the recreation department. And Mocus was the Mocus succeeding was the mayor. mayor. Mocus was the mayor. Peñalosa had not yet been One. mayor. Yeah, he lost to Mocus. And then Gil Pe Guillermo Peñalosa said, okay, I want to take over the Cicloía. So it was 81 kilometers when he took it over, and it was really run down. There's a book with all these pictures which show you how it was. And then he extended it from 81 to 121 kilometers in 1995, from 1995 to 1998. So this was a sort of his, his legacy to the city. And he created additional activities. So what you see there, this is a national park, so this is sort of the, one of the wider places where you see Cicloia. It's only Cicloia, the whole thing. And they do this aerobics class, which is for free. And a university here, which is Los Andes, uh, did a research on the cost-benefit ratio of the Cicloia and the Cicloias in the world. And they found that for every dollar that you spend, the public the sector spends in the Cicloia, you get a benefit of around twelve dollars in return. One to twelve. Wow. Yeah, because you have a lot of health benefits. Yeah, yeah but so this uh, is health. And then the Cicloia doesn't cost anything. You have to just to lock no, it, up and put some police. It costs seventeen thousand dollars just every Sunday. That's it. Seventeen thousand every Sunday. For seventeen thousand. One seven. For a hundred and twenty-one kilometers yes. of, of. So then, what you have to pay is for you have to pay for the trucks which are coming. And leaving all the different dividers, you have to pay for the for the people who are coming to ride around and, and sort of take care of everybody. Also, the guy is uh, giving the aerobics class, uh, and then also you, you see these booths which are around everywhere. So there are these small sectors with little booths. Those booths have been given by the recreation department. They give a permit to people so that they can sell juice or do bicycle mechanic or something else. These people, we did a study in 2003 to see how these people earned the money and how much of their income it was. And for let's say 60% of them, 100% of their income came from the Sunday Cyclovia earnings. 100% of their income? Yeah, and then, so you can see the Walk 21 memoirs of 2003 and that has the study from rights. So do they have to pay for these booths and these no. tents? So then they get they get a permit and they sort of qualify for the permit. And then they have a, I would have to see exactly how the contract is, but they have a permission to sell during Cicloia. Uh, I'm not sure if they would pay. Well, we can we can find out if they pay or not. In, in principle, they should not. They just get the permit to be there for a while. It's, uh, you said the World 21 of 2005 yeah, I has this case study. This is, this is Lloyd okay. Wright and others. So then we helped in doing the survey. And we also estimated how much money was lost by the by the gasoline uh, places along the corridors of the Cyclovia. So they protested, of course, a lot. It was 1974 when it started. So at that point, it started being a 3.8 kilometer circuit. Which is a, which okay. around like this, and then it started to extend. Just because this study were one dollar, one dollar is being spent. It's based return on twelve dollars. When was the study done? Maybe two thousand ten. But we can, I can send you it. Yeah, I would very much. So just and to confirm the figures, they check Bogota and others. Seventeen thousand is the cost every Sunday. Sunday. Per Sunday, it's one hundred and twenty-one yeah. kilometers. The, re the ratio is one dollar to twelve dollars, yeah. and this is looking only at health benefits. Yeah, is that it? and we will confirm everything with the actual okay, papers. Just, yeah, just to, yeah. yeah, so then that's sort of the key data yeah, of the Cyclovia. Why, yeah. why don't we bring this one out again as a technical document in our series? Because that's the so there is a manual of how to do a Cyclovia, and it's a 190-page manual in Spanish and English done by Uniandes. And it has every step, it has videos and everything, and then if you want I can send you the link. Uh, and it has the PDF manual and uh, every little detail and sort of showing everything, how they do it, how they don't do it, how they prefer to do it, uh, based on the Bogota and other different examples. So that's, I mean, there's a lot of literature on Cicloia, especially done by these people from the Uniandes. They also did another one, which was 
comparing noise and contamination levels between Sunday and the regular weekday. And of course they found out that it was much more silent during the Sunday and much less pollution during the Sunday because it was just there was just no car around in the places where they were taking Well, but also it's a different patch uh, yes, trip that's, pattern. That's, it's that's a different really, day. You know? Right, it's a different in any day, city it's a different it would be purpose. Harmer. Yeah, but the thing is, if you live there, what would you like to do? Yeah, okay. Yeah? So, Bogota was the first cyclovia, right? Bogota? Is that right? Because Brazil that we have many, question. but I think here is the... So, yeah, what we know as a city... Not real right, but the no. first one maybe Latin So, America. Berlin was the first city to close the roads because of the lack of uh, fuel during the Second World War. I think so, that, that was, was also in a weekend? And then... It was, I think it was Saturdays and Sundays they closed the roads yes. to cars, yeah? So that is the first example of something similar. In the 70s? In, in, no, in the 70s. 50s. And then the, the 70s, 70s, because of the oil embargo, then the Netherlands was sort of the more uh, uh, common example of having the, the something similar to This is all the literature available. Yeah. Oil, oil uh, crisis, Germany. Yeah, yeah the oil yeah. 70s. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. The interesting thing is, all over Germany, Cars were not allowed to go on Sundays. Yeah. All over Germany. Okay. Yeah. So well, there was a car-free Germany. Yeah. And that that went about for five subsequent weekends. Every Sunday was locked up. Only emergency vehicles and so on and buses. So then this was oil embargo. The same happened in the Netherlands. So the Bogota mayor went to Amsterdam and saw this. Uh, sort of car free thing. And the said, we could also do this in Bogota. And then he came and then he sort of talked to some people. And then, of course, because this is a successful thing for 45 years and everybody said it was my idea. The story that I have read when we did the research on the history of use of bicycles in Bogota is that the mayor of 1974 visited the Netherlands, got the idea, came here, talked to some people. And then on December 19th of 1974, they, they did the first. 3.8 kilometer circuit mm -hmm. and then they didn't do much after that and then in 1976 they started again and then they strengthened it again in 1983 and they published a book they did the first seminar on Sunday car free thing like the Cyclovia and then it kept on until 1995 which is when they expanded it to 121 and we got to the Robins and then it's been like that ever since, it's 1995 essentially. So it's essentially the same. Every Sunday in aerobics. Yeah, and then we, we don't have enough time to go everywhere. Okay. But if we would go, you can go almost to the airport by Cicloia. And that particular one, during the construction of the BRT phase 3, they banned the Cicloia because they said we're doing the, the construction of the Cicloia. So everybody went against it and everybody said we really need the Cicloia and we need it back the day that you start operations of the BRT. So this was a huge fight because the BRT operators and the BRT company and the BRT system manager said it's too dangerous to have bicycles. So then we sent the Jakarta pictures and we said, this is happening in other places. It's I'm sorry, elaborate, Jakarta. Jakarta has also a Sunday car free and it has it along the, the road which has the BRT. But you can see that everybody's going just next to the bus and it's fine. Transmilenio, of course, said this is too dangerous and there's this suction phenomenon which people would be sucked into the bus, into the wheels in the bus. And this was the whole discussion. So what they ended up doing is that they ended up buying hundreds of cones, so these traffic cones, and they put them between the, the division of the Transmilenio actual divider and through the 50 centimeters to the to for the bikes, they would they put hundreds of cones along the entire road, and there's the Cicloia. So then they would give this buffer for the Cicloia. So the operations of a Cicloia started at four in the morning, especially for these kinds of things, just putting all these hundreds of things there. And you need the trucks to take them, and then you need the truck to pick them up, and the people to put them. So that's sort of the cost which they have to incur. But there's a lot of sort of resources and details on, on all these things. So depending on the level of, of interest that you have, we can go to the city center and then try to go down a little bit and we can see sort of the operation of this BRT and Cyclovia. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, I mean, it's going down and we have to go back up. If you're fine with that, we can go there now. You can walk up. Yeah, if you want to go take pictures of the aerobics, yes. it would be your time and we stay here yeah. taking care of the bikes.
final question. Yes. The study from uh, Uli Andes from about 2010 is that in Spanish language? Not in, in, in English. It's it's a, it's a, there's like three or four different journal papers on Ciclovia, which are available to you whenever you want. Yes. And we can even do an interview with the researcher who did them. They're really good. I mean, they've done surveys, on-site research, traffic counts. So the municipality has a unit that takes so care of that, has a manager, a cyclobia the, manager? The municipality has a recreation department. The recreation department has a unit of cyclovia and recreovia, which is a specific one which manages all this. Mm -hmm. They, so only them and Transmillennial system manager, have a right to exploit commercial in their products. They're the only two institutions of the city. And that's why they can actually, the $17,000 $17, come to, if my knowledge is correct, 50% of it comes from a, an insurance company which pays for this. So it's an insurance company, Coca-Cola also puts in some money, and then you can see Powerade has a little bit of money inside. So they put in some money so that it is actually generating revenue. And that's sponsorship. For, uh -huh, so they do have sponsorship and it is a sponsored activity for the recreation department. Okay. Yeah? More questions? I'm happy, what, very happy to answer. Yeah? What would a city, what would Bogota lose if there was no Cyclovia? They would, they would lose the chance for 1.5 million people who are going out there every Sunday to ride a bike or to do anything. I mean, so the, the, the transformation, yeah, some people say 1.5, others say 2 million. Nobody, from my point of view, there has not been a, a useful methodology to count. Because as you can see, everybody's going and coming back, so you're not really counting properly. But nobody's done a, an accurate count. But they estimate 1.5 to 2 million for every time. So the concept of Cyclovia has started as an urbanistic understanding of the city. So one of the guys who was writing about it in 1983 said this is about learning about your city and knowing your city because otherwise you'll see really small children on their own or with their friends because even children who are seven years old they're coming from 10 kilometers away in the south and on their own like this little i mean this girl is alone 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 and it's the only chance that they have during the entire week to get to know the rest of the city because during the week it's really not not so easy to just go out on a bike and then be careful so that's sort of one of the things that was very present in the promotion of the, of the Cyclovia. So it's the identity of Bogota as citizens of the entire city, yeah. not just a few places they go back and forth. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it, it's it's a network. It's a true network of 120 kilometers. Yeah, you can really get to any corner of the Cyclovia by Cyclovia, not having to run through any sort of patch of non ciclovias bro. It's really nice. But yeah, you want to go take that picture. Do you want to go do a little bit of capoeira? Thank you. Oh yeah? So here is group aerobics, but group capoeira. Cambio, bajamos, sostiene un rival hacia adentro, perfecto, subió y seguimos. Cambio, bajo, subo y ahora uno. Dos. Movimiento, cocoría. Eso es. Siete. Ocho. Dos. Cuente, cuente, no escuchamos. 
más duro 500 más, vamos tome aire, expulse por la boca uno dos tres cuatro cinco seis siete ocho nueve diez el aplauso continúa seguimos eso es Cambia los brazos, estira los brazos. Eso es, muy bien. Uno por delante y el otro por detrás. Ahora vamos a trabajar para hacer el trabajo abdominal. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Muy bien, grupo. Llegó. Cambio. Diez. Uno, dos, tres. Pilas. Ombligo hacia adentro, contraiga el abdomen. Cuenta. Ocho, eso es. Ayudando también para el trabajo cardiovascular. So after seeing the group capoeira, which originally I thought was aerobics, but no, it's capoeira. We're off to the city center, and as I understand it, the worst example of a pedestrianized area. So we're going to see how not to do a pedestrian area. We were on the other side of the street and now the Ciclovia has moved over here. Nick, you're from Toronto. I am. Have you been there recently or in recent years? Five years ago, last time. Five years. Does it feel like home? Um, feels familiar. No one say it feels like home. Yeah, it's a place I like a lot. So you're now a Londoner who lives in Paris. Indeed. Born in Toronto. Yes. So you've done it the other way around, because we have immigrants from around the world 
to migrate to a second country and then make Toronto their home. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just happened that way. I just... Maybe I'll go back. Who knows? <laughs> if you do go back, would, Cycle would Cyclovia in Toronto be something you would want to see? Definitely. I think it, maybe along the lakeshore or... I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember my Toronto geography. But yeah, I think it would be fantastic. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It's very flat. No? Well, we also have lots of ravines, but for the most part, yes, flat. Yeah. yeah. Has the street has the streetcar system expanded? No, the transit debate goes on ad infinitum, and it's an election issue. So. And two subway lines. Uh, we have two subway lines and a stubway, which we joke about as our third line. Okay. Well, that's Nick from London, who now lives in Paris, but born in Toronto, and we're he's part of our uh, group ride. Seclovia and Bogota. This parking lot has turned into an open air market. A parking lot as an open air market. Nick!
Okay, so this is the city center. So, Clarissa. So starting here, this is the pedestrianization from this current mayor. So, it was an excuse. They they had they were rebuilding that entire crossing because they were doing these ugly bridges. So he said, okay, we just do this pedestrian. Everything is pedestrian from this street onwards until the city center. So he just closed it down the first day and he said, well, there's no other option. We're going to pedestrianize, which is a very nice decision. But you can evaluate the implementation yeah. now. Yeah, but Carlos, it's this pedestrian from there. Every day. But I don't see I don't see it physically closed. Why don't they put the ball or something? Huh? So how, how? And there's not even a, a, a signboard for, for cars not to get in. So this is the permanent car-free pedestrian zone in Bogota. I'll return and take pictures because this is every day like this. So this would be the bike lane on our right and then the street is for pedestrians on the left which is where we're biking right now as it's Seclovia so we can bike on this side.
Hey, trampoline. Little kids. We're here in the city center where the Ciclovia meets the BRT Transmillenio Bus Rapid Transit Station and line. One three thirteen. The commercial speed of Transmillenio is 27 kilometers per hour. The commercial. But here on this trunk line, which is called the environmental axis, the Eje Ambiental, it's 13. Because they have to be really slow so that people can walk and it's fine. So that way is the, is the municipality and the, all the government buildings and the cathedral it's over there. Uh, it's, it's basically three blocks away, so maybe we can go and come back. Because you've seen this typical picture of Transmillenio, sort of the space, the Transmillenio and the mm -hmm. trees. It's down there, but you won't see the exact scene now on Sunday. But it's just really down there, just two blocks away. And here is the Transmillenio crossing Ciclovia. So the streetcar tracks that are still here The streetcars were taken out in 1949 or so because they thought they weren't modern Sounds like an argument we're hearing in Toronto nowadays So when you rip out the streetcars you might end up with BRT
Municipality, but we don't have a mayor today. He, he was deposed. So there is a there's an interim mayor, and then we have to do elections. So we do not have a mayor. Thank you. And then this was invaded by the guerrilla in the 86 or 87 or so. Uh, and then this is the church. And then the president is over there. So this is where all the powers are joined in the same space. Church, city country judiciary. Is that a good idea to have it all in the same space? Well, in the 17th century it was, but we are no longer a confessionary state. So the cathedral is sort of not necessarily has to be there, but it's 16th there. century. Yeah, I, I'm looks not, a bit newer than that. I'm not. So it says there 1814. Yeah? So it must have burned down a bit. Yeah. Okay, so that is that is the southernmost place we're going to come. We're going to go back. Uh, I need to do a Can vote. Can we go to that corner where there are all the, so the old colonial buildings? So it's still there you left. can go, and we'll wait for okay. you. Okay, thank you. Just going there for a minute. Okay, so we're going to stop for five minutes, and you can go anywhere. Just come back alive. And we're now turning back from the administrative center of Bogota, where the city hall, the federal government, the judiciary, and the church. At the church, it's Palm Sunday today, April 13th, 2014. So we're heading back to Lake of Bikes, where we rented our, uh, picked up our rental bikes. And I'm just going to record and uh, enjoy the ride.
So it connects with the low speed trunk line and then connects with the 26 company which is going towards the airport. So this is a huge work which lasted much more than fun because of corruption. And we lost the mayor also because of us.
So our group just stopped for a moment, catch our breath perhaps. We're almost done our group bike ride. There we go. One of the numerous bike repair along the Cyclovia route.
Typology of the cycloia. This is really nice, but then there's also sort of the northern part, which is this wider highway. And it's crossing the bridges and everything. But it really need we really need to leave at seven in the morning to see sort of the whole thing. Some people were saying 8:30 is too early. So. But that's another excuse for you to come back again. Or extend my stay. Extend and stay until next Sunday and then we do it again. No, this is, I mean, we normally need like four days in Bogota to see sort of... Well, I'm here till Friday. You are here? I am here Friday? till Friday. Okay, because we, since we, some of us continue to Pereira, but you could, I mean, we could set up something so that you go on bikeway. Bike with bike with. Okay. With Juan Manuel. And we'll figure know. that out. Get a bike for you, maybe one that was holding bike. Since we have everything in the in, uh, gym, then we're bringing it today. But yeah, you can do bikeways with really nice. Bikeways, you mean like bike paths and bike routes? Just sort of weekly. And you can see a lot of things there also.
I'm kind of sad that Seclovia is about to be over for me today. It's been an amazing experience. It is amazing. We need this in Toronto. I don't know what the hell is taking so long. And I do know what the hell is taking so long. But it's coming. And it's going to change our city for the better. It's going to make our people happier. It's going to make Toronto a Seclovia city. Himi Syed, for the last little bit, whatever remains of Seclovia, just enjoying it. Himi Syed in Bogota, Colombia, Sunday, Seclovia Sunday, Palm Sunday, April 13, 2014.